A film often deals with fictional people who go on a journey that changes their worldview by the end of the narrative. This is called character development, and is a time-tested storytelling trope. But sometimes these individuals change in such jarring ways that it ends up looking like a personality switch. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture, here with 10 movie characters whose personalities suddenly changed in sequels. Number 10. Superman in Justice League Henry Cavill's portrayal of Superman has been divisive among comic book fans. Though all can agree that he certainly looked the part, some believe Zack Snyder turned the Man of Steel into a somber and brooding hero, while others claim it was a good updating of the character. The latter's common criticism of Big Blue was attempted to be fixed in 2017's Justice League. Joss Whedon infamously reshot several scenes and attempted to turn Superman into a more traditional rendition of the character as seen in the Christopher Reeve movies. He's pleasant, light-hearted, and is the Boy Scout comic book fans recognise. But by doing this, Carl L ends up acting way too different from his previous appearances. Of course, it doesn't help that the infamous CGI moustache removal is terrible, and so the character is not only acting differently but looks jarring as well. Ironically, Whedon's intent was better executed in Zack Snyder's Justice League, as Superman's shift in personality is better executed. Clark here is portrayed as a man who has been lifted off his burdens because he finally accepts his calling as a hero. And while the character is more upbeat than in previous versions, it never clashes with the person we saw in Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. Number 9. James Bond in The Man with the Golden Gun Roger Moore ushered a new era of James Bond in 1973's Live and Let Die. In order to establish his own take on the character, 007 was tweaked in different ways, such as the briefings in his apartment or smoking a cigar. But in the sequel, The Man with the Golden Gun, it seemed like the filmmakers were backing out on this fresh take on the character. Bond acts cruel and outright vicious throughout the course of the film, such as when he threatens to shoot a man's private parts off if he doesn't give him the information. Throughout the picture, Moore's performance is out of place, even compared to his more serious take in For Your Eyes Only. Another infamous scene is when he confronts a woman for information. 007 twists her arm and even gives her a slap to get what he wants. Later on, Sir Roger Moore would admit his discomfort at Bond's portrayal in this movie. He explains that the filmmakers tried to bring the character closer to Sean Connery's version, but in doing so, made Moore's Bond unpleasant to watch. Number 8. Albus Dumbledore in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Albus Dumbledore is a core character in both the Harry Potter books and movie adaptations. As headmaster of Hogwarts, he is a powerful wizard, but at the same time is a gentle old man who serves as one of Harry's father figures. In the first two films, the character was played by the late Richard Harris, who embodied the character from the twinkle in his eye to his grandfatherly attitude towards his students. But as the actor passed away after Chamber of Secrets, Michael Gambon took over the role for the rest of the series. Gambon's first appearance was decent enough, but by the fourth film, Goblet of Fire, the change in the character would become infamous among hardcore Potterheads. In a notorious scene in the movie, Dumbledore angrily storms across the room to ask Harry if he put his name in the Goblet of Fire. Not only is it upsetting to watch, but this is a far cry from the kind old man we saw in the previous pictures. This change is largely attributed to Gambon's lack of knowledge of the source material, but the blame should also be put to the filmmakers who knew of the books and how out of character it was for Dumbledore to act like this. Number 7. Bruce Banner in Avengers Endgame Bruce Banner's early MCU appearance portrayed a man who was seething with anger and resentment because of his Hulk persona. Though he found a way to control his transformations, the Doctor still had issues, such as admitting that he considered suicide to escape being the Green Goliath. This characterization of the character, as well as his conflict with his two personas, would become the crux of Banner throughout most of his movie appearances. From his frustration at losing control due to Wanda's mind control in Age of Ultron, to his fear of losing his own identity in Thor Ragnarok, Bruce has always been one of the most emotionally complex Marvel characters. Because of this, his sudden reintroduction in Avengers Endgame, where he has merged both personas, was a letdown. All of the conflicts and struggles of Banner were suddenly resolved off-screen. Instead, audiences were left seeing a CGI Mark Ruffalo dabbing and taking pictures with kids. This sudden change would have been fixed had they kept a key scene in Avengers Infinity War. A deleted sequence reveals that Banner and Hulk would have resolved their differences and merged during the fight with Cole Obsidian. Keeping this scene would have made his change more acceptable in the next movie. Number 6. Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean – Dead Men Tell No Tales 
It's safe to say that Captain Jack Sparrow became a modern movie icon after his big screen debut in Pirates of the Caribbean The Curse of the Black Pearl. Played by Johnny Depp, his portrayal received an Academy Award nomination thanks to the character's unique and eccentric mannerisms. Upon first glance, the character is humorous and light-hearted, but as the story progresses you see a cunning man who is putting on an act and is hell-bent on getting his revenge on Hector Barbosa. As Sparrow's place in the story shifted and he became the protagonist, it was clear that his quirks were getting exaggerated to the point that he was unrecognisable in Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales. In the fifth film, Jack is often drunk and falls asleep in certain scenes. While previous offerings made it clear that a part of his drunk persona was to trick his enemies, Dead Men Tell No Tales makes it look like he really is inebriated. The character's antics are played too much for humour and he unfortunately ends up looking buffoonish because of it. Number 5. Darth Vader in The Empire Strikes Back it's clear that despite the huge universe he established, George Lucas did not have a clear plan when it came to the Star Wars trilogy. Of course, a key example of this was Luke and Leia's kiss before they were revealed to be siblings. Another example of this is the character of Darth Vader. In the first Star Wars picture, the character is acting under Grand Moff Tarkin and displays traits not seen after that film. He lifts Rebel Alliance troops with his bare hands and even raises his voice as he barks his orders. Even his identity as Anakin was not established here, while Ben Kenobi calls him Darth like a first name. It would take the sequel The Empire Strikes Back to define the character for years to come. This time, Vader is composed and ruthless, a man who force chokes his subordinates on a whim. Though he remains a hate-filled person, the Sith Lord is always collected and remains the most intimidating presence in the movie. The film would set the standard for Darth Vader in his future appearances. Though spin-offs such as Rogue One and Obi-Wan Kenobi would serve to bridge between the Vader in A New Hope and the one in Empire. Number 4. Drax the Destroyer in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Drax the Destroyer in the first Guardians of the Galaxy was an alien who had the inability to understand humour. Because of this, the comedy of the character came from his lack of comprehension and his overly serious demeanour. And even then, Drax was a man determined to avenge his family by stopping Ronan the Accuser and eventually Thanos. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 would forego all of this and turn Drax into a clown who would laugh at any given moment. Though some fans may say that this change is due to the time he spent with the Guardians, the edge that made Drax one of the most dangerous members of the team was gone, and instead he spends the entire film chuckling and pranking Mantis. This portrayal of the character would continue with his appearance in Avengers Infinity War onwards. With the upcoming release of Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 and Dave Bautista's dramatic turn in Knock at the Cabin, there is still hope for the character to return to his original personality. And with the actor saying that this will be his last time in the role, it is kind of now or never. Number 3. Marcus Brody in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in Raiders of the Lost Ark, Marcus Brody is one of Indiana Jones' associates who appears at the beginning and end of the film. The movie portrays him as a colleague of the archaeologist who laments that, had he been a younger man, he would have chased the Ark of the Covenant himself. Years later, the character would reappear in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where he'd get an expanded role. Marcus, however, would be written differently compared to his first appearance. For starters, Indy claims that Brody got lost in his own museum and is portrayed as a good-natured but bumbling ally for the Jones father and son duo. He is also relegated to comic relief for most of the movie, though has moments of competence when he helps interpret the Grail Diary and even stands up against the film's villains. Marcus's change in personality might make him too different from his original portrayal, but ultimately it helps him making the character stand out in the film. As Brody didn't appear too much in the first movie anyway, the change was not too jarring for fans of the series. Number 2. Ash Williams in Army of Darkness Ash Williams is the iconic protagonist of Sam Raimi's Evil Dead trilogy, but when the series began in 1981, the character was not the hero audiences now know and love. To begin with, Ash is called by his full first name, Ashley, for most of the film. At the same time, the character is meek, bookish, and freezes during tense and horrific moments. It isn't until later, when most of the cast have been turned into deadites, that Ash steps up to be the final boy of the movie. Though Evil Dead 2 would later start tweaking the character, it would take Army of Darkness to give fans the definitive portrayal of Ash Williams. The character is retooled as a wise-cracking jerk with a heart of gold who occasionally bumbles his way into trouble. The movie is filled with iconic lines from the horror legend, whilst his comedic traits are dialed up to 11, a far cry from the shrinking Violet of the original film. This change in personality would help audiences endear to Bruce Campbell's character, and this portrayal would carry over to the underrated series Ash vs Evil Dead. Number 1. Luke Hobbs in The Fate of the Furious 
Luke Hobbs was introduced in 2011's Fast Five and soon became a franchise mainstay. A DSS agent hellbent on taking down Dom Toretto and his crew, Dwayne Johnson's performance was considered a standout with his no-nonsense attitude and intense persona. For diehard fans of the series, it's a well-known fact that Hobbs was initially written for Tommy Lee Jones as an homage to his role in The Fugitive. It obviously didn't pan out as Johnson took over and the rest is history. But knowing that fact, it can be easy to see how Jones influenced Johnson's portrayal in the film. From someone who doesn't care whether his targets are innocent or not, to his southern accent, Hobbs was clearly modelled after Sam Gerrard. But while the character was toned down for his subsequent appearances, by 2017's The Fate of the Furious, Hobbs no longer acted like the person fans fell in love with. Instead, he felt more like Dwayne Johnson playing himself, something that has become apparent with every recent performance of the superstar. Hobbs not only lost the accent and the goatee, but became humorous and wisecracking. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed anyone, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.